Greg Hunter, a little yep. gold news as we talked yesterday. But um, so you start off with obviously now that practice started, you've gotten a good, a little feel of this team. Is drinks that you think you have, shoot it well, defend it well, pass it well. What, what are the things you've seen so far you think you do well? I, I've, I've really liked the, the progress we've made from June until now, just in terms of like the offensive concepts and, and things. I, I feel like our identity as an offense is getting better. The uh, ball movements uh, really improved, shot selection, those type of things. Uh, and then defensively, again, just with all of all of the new guys and, and concepts and terminology, I, th I think we're starting to figure out some of the positioning th um, uh, that we're looking for. It's been great on the half court is this, the fall uh, portion of it. And then when we've gotten to our, our, our Friday scrimmages, we've had some slippage. So that's the part that we're trying to kind of clean up on the most. WSports.com. Two guys you added, uh, the two bigs. Um, walk us through those and your thought process. Of what you're doing. Yeah, we added a Harris and Abraham uh, fairly, fairly late in the process, uh, but uh, much needed. Uh, um, you know, and we're hoping that uh, they can find a way to give us some minutes. Uh, and and you know, even more importantly, I think it's really added to our, our depth in the front line just uh, uh, for practice and, and uh, being able to compete at a higher level there to have four guys now that we can you know, play on the, 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 the blue and whites and be able to you know, get through our entire practice. So uh, I'm hoping they're playing catch up a little bit, that they can continue to, to grow and expand uh, their roles and, and um, you know, fight for some of that playing time. I know you didn't have your full roster yet. What did you learn about this team when you were at Vernetto? Uh, I think the biggest thing was just learning, like, you know, some guys love the water, some guys don't, uh, you know, we took them swimming. Uh, some guys like the spaghetti, some guys don't. But it's, um, I, I think I'm joking about it, but that's also kind of what you figure out about your team a little bit is, you know, who are they as you're hanging out for 10 days and you just got your whole group and you're doing tours and, and, and that type of stuff. Uh, but on the basketball floor, I, I liked the way they, they came together and played. Um, uh, I thought the three games were all a little bit different. Uh, um, you know, they, they did what they needed to do in terms of you know, and, you know, playing well and, and, and winning the game fairly handily. But got to play a lot of guys, got a, a ton of minutes for everyone. So that was uh, you know, the reason you take those trips. And, and most importantly, got nobody hurt. Jackson with the Dominion Post. Uh, if you got guys who didn't like the spaghetti over there, you got to cut them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was some of the sauce. They didn't like the pesto sauce, maybe. Uh, with uh, uh, Yesufu, uh, is he back yet? Is he able to do more? I mean, what are you seeing there with him? Yeah, he's he's been participating in practice. Uh, uh, he's been. You know, full speed. Uh, it's also for him. Uh, you got to remember, he's been out for eight months, so uh, he's still working his way back. Even though he's been back for a few weeks, uh, so that that process is kind of open ended on on how long that'll take for him to feel like he's he's back to 100 percent. But he is out there and, and um, you know working his way to that point. He's obviously been with you before, so is there familiarity there? I mean, uh, does. Maybe he doesn't have to catch up, maybe as some of, as much as some of the other guys do. Or, or yeah, he certainly thing? understands the terminology, the concepts, everything right there. That that's um, you know gives him a chance to catch up a lot quicker than you know someone that's brand new. Uh, he understands what the expectations are as well. Like uh, you know, every coaching staff has different things that uh, you know they love and don't don't love as much, and he understands what those are. So, uh, yeah, I think he's doing some good things. Again, it's just uh, we're realistic too about how quickly that uh, is going to happen for him to get back to where he feels like he's you know fully back. Bob, Bob, Bob Hertzel from Fairmont and Clarksburg, many other places. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, have you kind of sat back and looked at the preseason rankings and seen that six of the top nine teams are from the conference you've moved into and you had any second thoughts about that or <laughs> saying that maybe life's easier elsewhere? Uh, yeah, it's a good league. I mean, we, we all know that. Um, and obviously that top end, uh, you, you understand like the preseason rankings don't mean a lot, especially now in, this, in the portal area. But uh, it also says a lot about some of those teams and what they have returning and and um, you know how good the league is, and that's uh, uh, you know our, our guys are excited about that. Uh, they're excited about the challenges and opportunities uh, that are in front of us. Uh, but we also know that it's uh, 
uh, you know, every single night you're going to be playing, um, you know, one of the best teams in the country. Do you expect it to be a while to get to that level, uh, or do you expect it to come out the door at that level? I mean, our goal is to, to come out and compete every night and, and, and try to win um, every single game, and that's going to continue to be our, our goal uh, every day moving forward. Uh, uh, and our guys right now, they're preparing to go do that, and, and you know, the wins and losses, uh, those um, those will play out as we get get uh, get into the season here. But we got right now we got 29 practices left before our first game, and that's our focus. I was to say to Bob's point, though, you got to be good pretty quick. You got UMass, you got Robert Morris, you, you're at Pitt, and you go to the Bahamas for those tough games. Georgetown, then you get into your Big 12 schedule. You got to be good pretty quick. Yeah, we made sure we challenged ourselves right away. You know, in our first year here. Um, no, it's a it's a good it's a good schedule. It's a good non-conference schedule, and we know what the league schedule is. And now going up to 20 games in the Big 12 play. So, um, you know, we understand that. We understand what. Uh, in order to to be successful, we're going to have to be really good in certain areas, and those are the things we'll continue to focus on. I know once the semester started. You guys are kind of still like in a workout schedule, but preseason practice, I mean, it's fully started now. Like, when did that? Yeah, we just started yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, we won't, um, I mean, you do a little more film work and some things like that that extends kind of the duration of time. Uh, but we don't, uh, I'm not a three hour practice guy. We, we try to keep our kind of our intensity level up, shorten it maybe 90 minutes, uh, but make sure we're doing everything at kind of a, a high octane level and, and uh, try to make them practice the way they're going to perform in a game as much as possible. But now you are in basketball mode, right? We are in basketball mode. Yeah. I think we've been in it for a while. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it does change, uh, just that added time. And, and then when it is official practice, you, you get that s little more sense of urgency of like that first game's around the corner. And you know, like we told the guys yesterday, it, it starts 30 days. We get 30 practices 42 days before our first game. Now there's 29 left, uh, and that doesn't it doesn't stop. So it's, uh, you know, we got a lot to do. We feel like we've made a lot of progress uh, from June until now, uh, and certainly feel like there's more steps to take uh, between now and then, and obviously throughout the season. But um, they're, they're working hard at it, and, and uh, I, I like their approach. You were kind of talking over the summer before you went to Italy, uh, you know, mixing that chemistry, getting it. Where, where are you guys at now with that? Uh, I imagine probably a little further along. Yeah, I, I, we, we got a, a much clearer identity, I think, as a coaching staff of, of you know what we think it should look like. And, and some of the roles are starting to get more defined. They're certainly not you know set in stone by any means, uh, but there's the guys are still competing for you know starting spots for you know role spots and, and, and all, the, all the way across. So uh, and we want that. We don't want you know the guys to get complacent in, in September here. So, uh, but I, I, again, they're, they're, I think our identity is starting to show up, uh, and, and now it's just uh, trying to get that identity to be on a more consistent basis every day. You kept to, Kevin, go ahead, Kevin. No, go ahead, John. Um, no, I'm just thinking at the same time. Go ahead, bud. Kevin Kinder from the Blue and Gold News. Coach, looking at your offenses in past years, it seems a little positionless, a lot of interchangeability, especially on the perimeter. Is that something you strive for? Or has that just been kind of the character, your personnel? What level, you know, on that path is this team? Yeah, we certainly try to play offense uh, that way. We try to have it be as positionless as possible, uh, open up the floor as much as possible uh, as well. Um, there'll be times that we're really positionless with one through five. Uh, uh, just with a little bit of our lack of size, but uh, I, I again, I, I do think on the offensive end we have guys that. Um, um, multiple guys that can handle it, play, make, uh, space the floor, which is uh, you know something that we're, we're, we try to do, put a, a huge emphasis on ball movement, and then taking care of the basketball. Uh, that's probably our number one priority that we talk about every single day is just, just not turning the ball over and making sure we get to, as good an opportunity as we can. And, um, I, you know, Monty Hansberry, just to get specific, you know, he's an undersized, you know, five men, but um, he's also going to present some 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 opportunities for us on the offensive end with his ability to space the floor. Uh, so we got to be able to utilize uh, that component um, you know, since we are undersized, uh, but then on the defensive end, get creative and how, how we can kind of protect ourselves um, with a little bit of lack of size on that side of the floor. So in that, on 
the offensive manager bigs have to do what to make this offense successful? They, they touch the ball a lot uh, in space. Uh, so they have to be able to, to you know, have the ball up at the, the top of the key and make, make decisions. Uh, you know, they don't have to break people down, but they got to be able to, you know, throw a back cut pass. They got to be able to dribble handoff um, and then be able to roll or pop depending on, you know, what their, what their, you know, best scenario is for them. But uh, that we do ask them to, to be involved with the offense a lot more out on the perimeter than maybe a lot of offenses would. I know you're learning your team, and that's a continual process. Would, you, would it be fair to say that you, you still don't know about them when things are bad? I mean, you know your son. You know some of the guys that you work with. Do you try to create things to, to try to get, learn about them, how things go when things aren't going well? Yeah, I'm the ref every day, so yeah, I, I give them plenty of bad calls. So uh, and they look at me, I was like, I didn't see it, you know. Uh, so um, yeah, we try to put them in situations where it's stacked to, uh, against them a little bit to create uh, a little, uh, you know, some of that. Uh, I think on every team, every single year, whether you got a lot of returners, there's always a piece or two missing from every team. And in our case, we have a lot of new guys. And the hardest thing for every team is you've got to learn how to win together. And, and how do you do that? Because it's, it's not always hitting 18 threes every night. Uh, so you have to figure out a win on a night where you're you know, two for 15 and you're getting some tough calls or you're on the road. Uh, how do you find a way to win those games? And right now, it's just me giving them bad calls. But um, we're getting there. And that's, uh, that's a process as well. And it's, you know, a lot of times, that doesn't happen on November 4th either. That's a season long process of how do you fight through adversity and and find a way to um, you know from a mental toughness standpoint how do you how do you figure out a way to win those games I guess that's the secret right figuring that out and still winning that's the hardest part right yeah everybody learns from losses right but being able to learn from wins and all that too I guess that's yeah it, 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 it all matters I mean every every single night you're gonna learn something new about your team every single practice I think you learn something new about your team and you know, just make sure you're continuing to um, you know make the steps you need to make to be more successful Coach, uh, I mean, obviously the Italy trip was like a month and a half ago um, but uh, Powell did a lot of really good things for you guys over there um, What's his? You know, what's he been like since? I mean, was that maybe just a good week for him, or has he been as good as what he was, you know, in Italy? I mean, yeah, he's done some really good things for us, and you know, like a lot of incoming freshmen, he has really a good week, and then he'll have a week where you know makes some of those mistakes. But what I love about him is his approach every single day. Is he just wants to get better. Uh, he wants to try to be great, and that's. Uh, when you have someone that's you know willing to come and take that mindset every day, uh, those mistakes are a lot, a lot easier to overlook because he's just trying to do whatever he, what he can to improve as an individual and then also to help our team. And uh, he's doing some really nice things. I think he's going to have uh, you know a good freshman year for us if he continues with that type of mindset. Yeah, you mentioned identity earlier. What do you want this identity to be? What should team, other teams say about your team ideally? Yeah, the, the the biggest thing, and it's our league on top of that, but I, I want our identity to be like you should be able to walk in that gym and, and everybody should walk out talking about how hard we play um, and how, how connected they are, um, you know, feel that life and that energy every single day. Um, and that's not only from – the team, but also from our coaching staff, uh, that that enthusiasm and love to to compete and, and uh, try to play at the highest level. And uh, the X's and O's pieces. I mean, we can talk about those sides too. But if you don't have those other things, then none of that <laughs> probably matters. You connected a couple of times, and even this summer, in describing things that you're looking for. I assume with some of that is just passing ball movement, things like that. Anything else included and in connected that you're looking for? Yeah, I think con connectivity as a defense is just as important uh, because the you know things happen on defense that you can't just draw up and script everything. So you have to be able to react and play off of one another, no differently than you do on offense. Uh, you know, being able to make plays and uh, when something gets thrown at you that's um, you know maybe not what you anticipated, how well do we cover for one another? And that communication piece and anticipation and um, it, that's an important part of being a good defense. And, and even in our last two weeks I think uh, uh, we've really progressed in that area of the of the floor as well and now it's just getting in good enough shape to be able to do it when we play up and down and and that type of stuff and that's that that's all again going to work itself out through this next month and a half and and then hopefully by game day be be ready to roll. 
John Beeline was here, and I, I, I assume you got together with him a little bit. Uh, did you know him before, and did he give you any idea of what it's like coaching here? Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach has nothing but great things about his experience here, and it was great to have him and the entire team back. Uh, they came to watch practice, and then we had him, um, uh, you know, coach, and the, the whole team got a chance to say a few words to the team and, and talk to them about their time here, about West Virginia, uh, about why they were successful. Uh, and then, you know, I thought all of them did a great job, too, of, you know, telling them how much they were behind them and, and you, know, you know, pulling for them to be successful as they move forward, too. So great to have Coach back. Um, uh, I think most of you know, like, that they ended my season one year when I was at Creighton, and um, they were pretty quick to put that, that, that replay video up on the, on the board. And so, um, but, no, it was, it was fun to have them all around and, and listen to their stories, and, and um, you know, that was a great team, great coach. Scout, didn't you? I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Came down to the last play. Yeah. Coach said he is designed like they work on that every day. I said you stole the ball and dunked it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was that was a, a fun NCAA tournament game at least uh, uh, for for them. Similar, yeah. Similarly style teams too, which was interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. It was a it was a great great matchup. Um, you know, Coach had his one three one and kind of you know his high post uh, you know back cuts and and uh, all the flare screens that they they ran made it difficult and challenging to to guard them. Pitts Noggle out there at six ten, firing threes from twenty five feet. So, uh, Funk was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we still talk about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Yeah. No, it was good. Anything uh, about this team surprise you so far? I know it's early, but. Positive or negative? I don't think anything's really stood out. Uh, I think that, the, the, again, the, the thing that you're most happy about is everybody's approach has been, you know, still getting better. And, um, you know, sometimes that, that can start to turn as you get into September and roles start to become a little more recognizable to everyone. And, and uh, to our guys' credit, they've continued to, to come out every day, great, great, great attitude, put a smile on their face, and, and uh, you know, compete pretty hard. You know, playing time. Is, are you an experimental guy, or do guys have to earn their time on the floor? How do you go about that early in the year? I mean, early in the year, your your rotation will be a little bit bigger. Uh, as the year goes on, it probably settles into more of that eight to nine type of role. But uh, always trying to make sure that you have guys ready. Um, you know, I've I've had some really bad luck as as a head coach with some pretty significant injuries and things, and and you find out very quickly and in the course of a long season that you you have to have guys always ready to to step in, and and it may be even just a non-starter, sixth seventh man that now all of a sudden gets inserted in that starting role. Uh, I think Joe Joe was a a great example of his sophomore year with with us at Drake. He was coming off the bench playing 10, 12 minutes a game. Uh, had two starters go out, and he averaged, uh, you know, I think close to 30 his last eight games. Maybe the coach should have played him a little more but, um, before that. But um, but I think that's a great example of somebody just you know, making sure that their approach stays the same. They continue to stay engaged with the team, and then when when that opportunity comes, they're ready to to take advantage of it. I was talking to a former coach here, who coached 30 years ago, and he said, I never had the top three guys in the league, but eight, nine, I was always there. Is that kind of how you want to build it? Maybe not top three, but getting into the depth and rotations and so forth? Can we have both? Sure. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, I think every team's different. I mean, you, you, there might be some years, uh, you know, you know, you know, I was at Creighton as assistant coach. You have Doug, Doug McDermott. Well, that's going to be your guy, and then everybody kind of fill in place. There might be other years where you have a couple guys or two or three guys, and, and then more years maybe it's where it's just a complete balance, and we've had that before too. So I think every team takes on its own identity, and, and then uh, you know, as a coaching staff, you just got to try to play to, play to that, um, those strengths as best as possible. I said you have top three. You're really good then. <laughs> yeah. You're cooking gas. So with Tucker's – Injury situation. Do you have to be a little guarded with him, or you just got to let him play and keep your fingers crossed? I think for the most part, uh, right now, it's uh, you got to let him play and and you'd be smart about some of the things you do. Um, maybe he takes one or two less reps in a rebounding drill that. Uh, um, maybe you tell them, hey, I know we said to dive on the floor, but just pretend like you, you couldn't get to that one once in a while. But um, I think you just got to be smart with it. Like everybody, like, um, you know, it's coming off an injury, just make sure you're, you're 
you know, being being calculated on on some of the drills you have him do or don't do. You know, same thing with Joe, like you know, managing some of his reps and th some things like that. Hey, Coach, I'm kind of curious with Hansberry and that. You know, how do you kind of see? Uh, I mean, obviously, he's going to be a little bit undersized, but maybe he's got the ability to make up for that, or maybe you can use him being undersized as, as an advantage. I mean, how do you kind of see the season playing out for him? Because, I mean, he's obviously got some potential there. I mean. Yeah, I think offensively, if, if, if you're going to be 6'7", and, and, and you have the ability to shoot threes, you have to take advantage of that on the offensive end. Because that is, that is tricky to guard uh, sometimes. So, no. You know, so, so for us to be successful on offense, uh, we have to be able to utilize Amani out in space some, and and it's uh, it's tricky a little bit because you can't always have him just popping either. You got to put some pressure on the rim uh, with the pick and roll and having the ball handler and stuff. So him, and he's been working through that too of finding where can he choose his spots to pop and put pressure on the defense and a five man to draw out, get those seven footers out in space, and and when to you know put pressure on the rim as a roller in, in the pick and roll game and. Uh, so we're, we're going to do everything we can to utilize kind of, okay, we're a little undersized there, but we also have you know some unique advantages of being, being able to play five out and him able to space the floor more. And and um, we'll, we'll try to use that as much as to our advantage as we can. And has he got to be your leading rebounder, do you think? Or, or? I don't think he has to be. I, I think we have a group. I mean, positionally, uh, even like Tucker and Toby at, at the four and the three, they're six, eight, and six, seven. So it, it's really the five spot that we're, you know, a little bit undersized with Amani's in. When Eduardo's in, you know, we're 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 right there. So, I think uh, across the board, our positional size is 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 pretty good. Um, uh, defensive rebounding, though, to, to me is still a little bit of like a want to, and and having a collective group that wants to go make sure we're hitting people and and keeping people from getting where they can be in a position to just jump over us. So. As long as we can continue to do that and get better in those areas, I think we'll be a good defensive rebounding team, and 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 then we can go and play on offense. You mentioned roles, a guy like Jaden Stone. How do you see him fitting in the picture, and what attracted you to you know bring him here? Yeah, I like Jaden. He, he's um, you know one of those guys that came out of college and averaged you know 20 points a game last year at Detroit. Uh, the year before that, uh, I think it was around 15. Uh, so he he's figuring out how can he best utilize. Uh, um, his talents on the offensive end, but you know I like what he he brings because he's got some athleticism. He can get to the rim. Uh, he's got a good mid range. Uh, he can shoot the three. Uh, so I, I think he's you know as it's gone on, he's getting more and more comfortable with what we're trying to do at both ends of the floor. And I anticipate him, you know, playing a good role for us this year. Can you guys be defensively work in progress? Can you be really good? Oh, we're definitely. We're definitely a work in progress still. Yeah, let's start let's start with that. Um, but uh, I, I do think we have the the team that can be a good connected defensive team. Um, uh, I think we have good length in some spots. Uh, um, there are some areas where we're 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 not maybe have elite a, a big collection of elite uh, individual defenders, but I think collectively as a group we could be really good defensively, and that's what you have to be um, anyway. So uh, we've shown flashes so even in, in, in the short time we've had them this fall where I, I thought on film it's like you go home and watch it and it's like we're, we're getting there. And then you'll have a day where maybe we, we take a step back. But from June till now, we've made really good strides. we just got to continue to make those strides as we get closer to November. You guys obviously took the trip to Italy. Uh, anything else you guys explored in the off season, getting the guys together and saying, "Hey, let's go do this," or let's, you know, and, and to try to, you know, we didn't we didn't have a ton of time this summer, just with everything being new for us too. And um, we did we did cancel practice and went bowling one day, and that was uh, that might have been uh, one of. Uh, it changed our team a little bit, which is crazy because we went from we were practicing, practice, practice. And all of a sudden, we went bowling, and I saw all these personalities I hadn't seen on the basketball floor yet. I mean, guys are throwing strikes and they're doing windmills through down the down the lane and, and chest bumping and things. And 
um, I thought it was great for us. I didn't anticipate that being what would come out of that day bowling, but all of a sudden now the next day in practice was like, guys, that personality as, as, is a, as a team is in there. Like, let it shine in, uh, on the floor, too, when, when we have a big play and you have a teammate and you want to go celebrate a dunk, go celebrate. Um, that's, that's what it's supposed to look like. And um, so we don't have a lot of great bowlers, but that's okay. You know? my next question. Yeah. No, no future pros? No, no, no future pro bowlers. I didn't, I didn't see any. I'm not a great bowler evaluator, but it, it didn't appear that way. I was going to say, did the coaches bowl, too? Yeah, we bowled. Yeah, we're, we don't have any professional coaching bowlers, either getting used to the campus where everything is, all this, obviously with the new staff. But you haven't made a whole lot of moves. Was that a different kind of process for you? And was there anything you were like, hey, I've got to learn and know where this is first or how to do this first? I think for me, it was the I had to find the eating spots. I was staying in a hotel, so that, uh, that's where I, I made a lot of progress in my first month on the job. Uh, overall, I think it's more just, you know, like anything, just – Getting to know everyone and, you know, when you need something, who do you call for this or that, uh, whether it's academics or just something in the community, um, you know, visits, official visits, you know, those type of things. So uh, that's just all comes with time and, and the process. But um, people have been unbelievably helpful, um, you know, to, for, for myself, our staff, our team. I mean, I, I think – Anytime we talk about it, everybody talks about um, you know how engaging people have been and, and supportive and helping us along with that that process as as we're getting to know everything. So you mentioned official visits, so recruiting philosophy for you. Obviously, this year you had to take a lot of the transfers, but uh, what, what what's your percent? Do you think of high school guys? How much are you hitting the recruiting trail now? Obviously, I'm sure a lot, but 25s, 26s, 27s. Who, yeah. What's, what's the recruiting look like? Yeah, most of our focus has been on the, on the 25s right now uh, and then 26s as well, but more more on the 25s. And then that's, uh, you know, our philosophy on it's a little bit of the year by year of, of you know, what's our needs, how many can we take, um, um, and then, you know, kind of see how that plays out in the fall and, and making sure, though, that you're also in a position in the spring to be able to, you know, fill some of those needs um, with graduation and, maybe even unexpected, you know, transfers and that type of stuff. You just – you have to be prepared, to, you know, for any scenario in recruiting anymore as you get into the spring and making sure that uh, you have the ability to, to pivot quickly, to have a list of guys at every position that uh, you um, can go out and, and recruit. The unique thing about your roster is it's either seniors or freshmen with a little bit in between some – you got to balance that out, I guess, as the years go forward, right? Yeah, in the ideal world, you wouldn't like to have, uh, you know, eight scholarships every year. You'd, you'd like to get, get that down more in that four to five range. Um, or even a few years ago, it used to be one, two, or three, and that's, you know, recruiting's just changed a little bit. But, you know, four, five, six, if that's kind of what you're you're signing every year, I think it just puts you in a better, better position to have more stability, more consistency, and that's uh, ultimately what you want to get to as a program where you can – um, you know, not have to rely on you know, a little bit what we have this year of trying to reteach 12, 12 new guys every year. Territory wise, I mean, recruiting's coast to coast anymore, but do you, do you try to concentrate on a territory in five hours around Morgantown, or what do you do? Yeah, we're, we're everywhere. Um, I mean, our, our, our goal even in putting the staff together is to make sure we can we can touch um, coast to coast and and internationally as well and I think um, you know it used to be that that regional area was you you had to only you know make sure you recruited there and now it's I think you have to be able to recruit everywhere now you still have to put a lot of um, you know Three hours away is a good thing. You know that helps with getting family members here. They can come come to the game. So you want to be incredibly strong in your region, uh, but you also have to be able to make sure that you can touch uh, anywhere you need to go to to get guys. About DC I was a former player here last week. I ran into Damian Owens. That's a pretty good area. It's pretty close. Is that some place that you're pretty interested in? Yeah. Well, um, it's a it's a very good area, yeah. And and Chester Frazier from our staff is, um, uh, is born and raised there, so uh, he's very strong ties to that that area. So, but yes, that's uh, an area we'll definitely recruit very heavily. How much international flavor you have at Drake? I know you obviously have several here now, but did you have a lot of that Drake too? Or we didn't have a ton. We had we had a couple. Um, you know, a lot of that uh, to, you know, to be quite 
honest is they just don't have the ability to you know financially to fly over there and fly back a lot so uh, we weren't able to recruit quite as heavily internationally as 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 now we we can kind of um be able to connect a little bit more um, than we were previously but i i just think that the, the game has become so so worldwide that um, yeah, there's more more kids willing to come over now and and play college basketball where you know, a few years ago before NIL, maybe they were more just wanting to stay with their club team and stay over, overseas. Coach, uh, Kevin Redford, Golden Blue Nation. Kind of on that note, uh, Ofri, I know he's not one of your recruits, but last year kind of pitched to us as a developmental guy. He stepped in when he needed to. Uh, still see him that way, or what's his contribution level looking like? Yeah, he's, he's continued to, to, you know, you know, work hard. A great kid uh, gives us all he has, and and uh, again, like everybody, he's he's um, you know learning a new system and things. So he's he's working through that as well. But um, you know, certainly have enjoyed uh, the way he approaches it every single day. I mean, they're all kind of like yeah. like freshmen in a way, just because it's all new to to everybody. But um, again, he, he's he's been great. Uh, you know. Um, in the way he's approached it, and, and um, you know he'll continue to do good things for us there. Greg Carrier, West Virginia Metro News. What one aspect does the team need to make the most progress in before playing a meaningful game? Consistently, consistency defensively is is uh, where we where we've got to make some strides. I mean that's um, the one thing that shows up on 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 tape right now is is just um, you know as, especially as we continue to get deeper into practice and the conditioning starts to set in is is making sure that like our positioning and those type of things that I think are so critical for us to be a good defensive team they start to get uh, you know a little stretched out and and now those opportunities to score become a little bit easier so um, we're getting there the, those habits take a while to create and you don't you know create habits in you know a few weeks uh, uh, but they're 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 getting a lot better and 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 eventually you just get to that point where they, it kind of clicks and that's uh, we're not quite there yet but I think we're getting closer to that kind of what Greg was talking about with recruiting moving forward in the future would you like to do predominantly high school and build over time or mix with transfers or? I think you're gonna have to do a mix that's just uh, the, the way college uh, you know all, all recruiting is in all, in all sports you have to be able to do both uh, just because um, you know in the spring if you have an un unexpected uh, departure you're going to have to be able to be strong in the portal and make sure you have those ties and I think the biggest thing for us in recruiting is making sure in the high school recruiting we're spreading um, a very wide net so that even with kids we don't maybe get the first time around that there's a relationship that's already been formed and built uh, because those in in the springtime when the portal happens those recruitments are you know a lot of times one to three weeks uh, so you want to make sure that we've developed as many um, relationships as, as possible to, to put ourselves in a position to be strong in the high school uh, recruiting and then also be strong uh, when the portal uh, hits curious maybe a dumb question but what is a good shot to you and, and what is a bad shot the ones that go in and the ones that don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I, I'm um I, I don't uh, I don't talk to our guys a ton about shot selection. I I, I want our guys to be very aggressive. I want them to be confident, um, and then if we need to pull them back a little bit, we will. But the last thing I think you can do with a shooter and a scorer is have them looking over their shoulder, um, and I, w I want them to kind of figure it out on their own. And and most of the time that happens. I think guys figure out you know what I haven't made this step back three in like three months. Maybe I shouldn't try that in the first game. Uh, and I, I think it, it, it kind of evolves from there. But I want, I want guys that can score to go feel that they got the, the green light to go do that, and, and they can play at a different level. I always, I always look back, and so 26 years, like the scout team or you know whatever jersey you put on them, you know red team or whatever. You, you see those guys in the practice tape, and they're just dominating practice. And then you take that practice jer or their, their scout team jersey off and put. The other uniform on them, and it's like they they get scared because on the scout team they get all this freedom and they don't have to worry about being get getting yelled at. They can play the other team's best player and and they can play at a different level. And that's the that's how I want our guys to play offensively is with that type of confidence. You're thinking back through your career, whether guys you play, worked with or coach, even Eldon Miller, guys like that, were they all guys that gave you the green light, or were they guys that 
and you're kind of smiling. I guess Elder Miller <laughs> yeah. wasn't that guy. And I don't think Coach Coach Miller's a little more defensive he wasn't minded. Yeah. He was going to shoot where? Yeah, maybe yeah. a little bit more. And I love Coach Miller, yeah. but yeah, and there wasn't there wasn't a lot of green lights there. Yeah. But. <laughs> so so that so you had both of that through your career. Yeah, I've, I, and he's yeah, Elton's a great coach, and and yeah. uh, uh, but I've had uh, you know Coach Altman uh, for for a long time, Coach McDermott. Um, uh, both very good coaches in that regard of, of, of allowing players to, to be players and, and play through a, f a few mistakes here and there, but also, um, you know, understanding like what winning and losing is too. And, you know, you can't let it get too far away from you as well. So th that freedom comes with it. I tell our guys all the time, there's a great responsibility with that freedom of yeah. making sure that it doesn't become selfishly motivated freedom that now all of a sudden we just got a lot of bad shots getting taken because it's your turn. Those old school coaches, they hate the passing game because they don't know who's shooting it and they put four balance. That's the things they always complain about. Yeah. You don't know who's shooting it, you don't know how to, you know. Yeah, and we have a lot of freedom in our offense. A lot of guys are going to touch the ball. Uh, um, and, and then when we want to get a specific shot, you know, we can we can dial up those numbers. But uh, in general, I, again, over the course of time, I just think our guys understand what what they're good at and, and what they're, you know, not as good at, and, and they play to their strengths as as it evolves. But I never want them to stop growing their game either. Uh, so I want them to continue, especially in practice. Um, you know, you can continue to try things and stuff, but uh, you know, get on game day, know, know which one is going to help us win and which one you're maybe not quite ready for yet.